Was that, was that Tony Danza or something, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, Judith Light or yeah. something, and they were trying to figure out who was the boss. Yeah, well, the, that's kind of like, I think, a lot of us. You know, we're, we're trying to figure out, or we should, you know, we're trying to figure out if, if it's us or the Lord that's the boss. And I think sometimes we, we waver back and forth. But uh, I, I just touched on that because when we're talking about work, in, in the Gospel of John, in, in chapter 6, the people are asking, and they're asking Jesus, and they said, you know, what, was, what must we do? What must, can't even talk. There must be something in my teeth. What must we do to perform the works of God? Anybody want to know how Jesus replied to him? He said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you look it up, you got it, right? He said, this is the work of God that you believe in in the one whom he sent, right? Now, it sounds very easy, but it's often, it just strikes me sometimes that we might say it, but, but do we truly live it? And um, I read a story by a gentleman named Colin Smith, and I thought it fit really well, basically because I could relate to it fairly well. Have any of you, uh, do any of you, or have any of you worked for like a very, very large company? Like a big, big company that has, yeah, there you go, Wesley, right? And you, yeah. So a lot of times, if you ever saw that, that TV show Undercover Boss, those usually are really big companies that usually the guy that runs the place, nobody really knows who they are, right? Sometimes they always put something on or whatever. But it reminded me of a story that he was talking about. Uh, and he said that uh, one day a gal was at work. She was... Uh, you know, doing, I don't know, some receptionist, paperwork, uh, reception. I don't know what she did there. But anyway, um, and she worked for a very large multinational company that had locations all over the country. And, you know, and try to picture you're in her spot where some guy just comes walking into the office and, and walks <coughs> up to your desk and says to you, hey, you need to stop what you're doing. I want you to go, uh, you know, up to the fourth floor with me for a few minutes. Right? So, how do you respond to that? No. You, you don't, right? Right? You don't. I mean, that'd be like you, somebody coming over to the farm that you don't know. Yeah. And, you know, and say, well, Bill, I know you're going to be milking in half hour, but you need to forget that because we're going to go look at this. Right? You're going to say, uh, no, right? That's not going to happen. Right? And the reason is, is because, well... You got responsibility, and if you're working in that big company, you don't feel like losing your job today to whoever walks up, right? And then they said, okay, so let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's say before this gentleman walks up to your desk or whatever, the, the receptionist at the front door recognizes who this guy is, and she quickly sends an email out to everybody that, hey, you know, the CEO just walked in, this is what it looks like. Just be on your toes, right? Now, when this guy walks up to your desk and says, hey, I need you to come up to the fourth floor with me, <coughs> what do you do? <coughs> right, what's the difference? You know who he is. You know who he is, right? You, you know who he is. And it's kind of interesting that when we look in the Gospels, when Jesus was calling his disciples, right? Did they, how, did they, how did they respond to his call, right? Let me, uh, let me go to uh, let me go to the Gospel of Matthew. And I'm going to look in chapter, well, let's see, chapter 4 to 4, 9, 4, 19. So as Jesus calls his disciples, so as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon and Peter, his brother Andrew, and they were casting it into the lake for they were fishermen. Come follow me, he said and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Sound like something you'd logically do? Some guy walking along? No. No, right? And then you can even look at it, go to uh, chapter 9, and we'll look at verse 9 because there's another calling there. And this is the calling of Matthew. Now Matthew is an interesting character because what was Matthew's original name? You know what Matthew was called? It wasn't just called Matthew. Levi. Levi. 
Now that's kind of interesting because if you're named Levi, that probably meant that he was destined. Anybody know what your name was Levi back then? When you, if you were named Levi when you were little, but well, you were destined to be, supposedly, what'd you say? A priest, a priest right? Yeah, because the Levites, right? They took care of it. So think about this for a minute. Here's, a, here's a, a kid that was named Levi. So he's probably in a position to be raised to be a priest. Now, as he's an adult, what's he, what is he now? He's a tax collector. So somewhere, according to probably his family, something went horribly wrong, right? Because he went from being a priest serving the Lord to being a tax collector serving the Romans. Which is very interesting if you spend some time thinking about that and Jesus calling him. But anyway, when Jesus calls him, he just says, and Jesus went on from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at a tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Right? No debate, no argument. So why? Why would they, why would they <coughs> follow him? Why would they follow him, but if we're sitting at our job and somebody just walks up, we're just going to go tell them to fly a kite? And the answer was absolutely right. They knew who he was. And so they had no problem in following him. So the question for us is, when it comes to our work for the Lord, when it comes to us having faith, in the one that the Father sent, <coughs> is that how we live our lives? Do we live our lives that we know, quote, I guess in a modern term, that he's the boss? Or are we like that TV series where we're going to struggle between him being the boss and ourselves being the boss? You know, is, is it what I want to do? Or is it what he wants to do? Because if, we, if any of us work for somebody other than ourselves, usually that decision is pretty much well made for us. If we go into work and we get to work and we really don't feel like doing whatever we're supposed to do that day, it usually doesn't go over very well, does it? And, and we don't expect it to, do we? Yet somehow with our faith, we expect to be able to, well, I know what the boss wants me to do. But that's not really what I want to do. I, I know the boss tells me that I should show compassion and love, not to just those who love me, but to everyone. But I don't really want to do that. I know the boss tells me that I should forgive other people the way that he has forgiven me. But I don't really want to do that. And it's interesting that we can do those kind of things and really not spend a whole lot of time thinking about it. Because if that's the case, I mean, is he really the boss? And, and if he's not the boss, then the, the, the only other answer is that you truly, somewhere, have some doubt. You will never, ever, ever, ever follow Jesus as the boss until you are convinced that he is more than just some historical figure. Once you are convinced of that fact, once you know who he is, you'll jump at the privilege to serve and follow him. <coughs> Why wouldn't we? What a, of, what a debt of gratitude. Right? Someone who gave himself so that we could have eternal life. How do you repay that? You, you can't put a price tag on it. It's priceless. His love for us is priceless. And all he asks is that we follow. All he asks is that in our life, let him be the boss. You know, it's, it sounds so simple, yet sometimes it's so hard. 
And it's amazing because we can do it in our secular society all the time. <coughs> Most of us have a boss. And even if we are the boss, we still got a boss. <laughs> and yet when it comes to our faith, we have such a hard time. We can say the words, yes, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Yep, I believe in God. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's my Lord and Savior. But as the saying goes, when the rubber hits the road, are we following those work rules? Are, are we living our calling? Now, none of us are perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. In fact, probably some of us even make mistakes at work. I mean, it happens. That's one of the great things about the Lord. Is it's such a loving and forgiving Lord. <coughs> he just wants us, as it said in the Scripture, to do what? This is the work of God, that you believe in Him whom He has sent. Everything else will fall into place. When you are truly convinced that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you won't have to think about doing works. Those works will be a result of that realization. It'll be a privilege to serve Him. You know, churches make a bad mistake when they're looking to reach out <coughs> into the community, when they're, when they're looking for folks to help do that. They use an awful word. They use the word volunteer. That's an awful word. Churches should never use the word volunteer. It has no place in the church. Here's why. Because when we think about a volunteer, anybody here ever been a volunteer? If you're a volunteer, right, who picks the hours you work? You do. You do, right? And besides, who even decides if you want to work or not? You do. And if it's a particular thing, you do, right? Hey, would you like to volunteer to do this? Well, I don't know. What are we doing? Because if it's not something I want to do, well, I'm not going to volunteer. Right? Volunteer is a word we should never use. I mean, does Scripture say that? Jesus came to volunteer. And so we should volunteer as he volunteered. Is that what Scripture says? No. What's the word? Serve. 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 Jesus came to serve, not be served. And if we're going to be Christians, then we should serve too. The churches say, you know, brothers and sisters, we need help to serve the Lord. Yeah, we're working for the Lord, right? We just talked about that last week. We should have a servant attitude. It should be a joy to serve one another. It should be a joy to reach out in our community and share the love that we have through Christ. But we're never going to do that until in our hearts we truly believe that Christ is who He say, says He is. And we truly grasp the enormity of what He's done for each and every one. Which works really well, because it's Community Sunday today. So that's kind of, kind of a good segue right into that, because uh, he told us to do this, didn't he? Yeah. It's kind of like the Great Commission, right? Which is, by the way, it's called a commission, not an omission. It's not the Great Omission. It's one of those things the boss has called us to do. As we get ready to celebrate at the Lord's Table this morning, it's important to know that you do not have to be a member of the Sterling Wesleyan Church to join us at the Lord's table this morning. If you love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you are more than welcome to join us at his table this morning. And look at that, we've got the charge sound right, <laughs> right before we have communion. <coughs> I, you know, that the, the Holy Spirit has a way of doing stuff like that to me. I mean, I went to do a, um, Friday, I went to a memorial service. I was called to do a memorial service, and I got up at the beginning of the memorial service, and I 
stood at the lectern, and the, as soon as I went to speak, the train tracks was right next door to the funeral chapel, and the train went by, so every day I had to sit there and wait for the train for a few minutes. Yeah, I got that kind of time. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, as he was gathered in the upper room with his disciples, he took bread. Giving thanks and praise, he broke the bread. And handing it to his disciples, he told them, Take and eat, each of you. This is my body, which has been given up for you. In the same way, when the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, giving thanks and praise, he handed the cup to his disciples and told them, Take and drink, each of you. This is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant has been shed for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, in remembrance of these your mighty acts, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By the power of the Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world over until Christ comes again and we all share this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in your holy church and by the power of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one, for we all partake of the one loaf. You can do it. This is the body of Christ given up for you. Take it. The sharing in the cup is the sharing of the blood of Jesus Christ.
This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Father, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go out in the power of the Holy Spirit to give of ourselves to others. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <coughs> Our last song this morning is 575, Leaning on the Everlasting <coughs> So why don't we stand? It makes it easier to lean. Shepherd, all day event, admission by donation. So come and check that out. The, the main band that will be there this year is the JJ Weeks Band, um, which is uh, a pretty popular group. So we're looking forward to them being there. Also, coming up on September 29th is the Gospel Fest um, at the Bentley Church. So keep that in mind too. And it's, that's by donation too, isn't it? Yeah. So good stuff. Beautiful, beautiful times and days. And hopefully, everybody does. That's a wonderful, wonderful week. Anybody else got anything they want to add? Um, not this week, but next week. Um, I will be gone. And so if somebody could catch the flowers on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and there's a container up there, that they could just stop, and everyone will just give it, it'll, it'll run out, just water it the best you can, try to keep them alive. Okay, so, so Sherry said, everybody pray for rain. 
Not it's this Monday, Tuesday, rain, Wednesday. If it rains, <laughs> don't. Yeah, it still needs to be watered. If it rains, don't. Yeah. Yeah. It no. Have okay. Water. Yep. You know what? And I, I'll be back here for sure Monday, so I can I can probably make that happen for us. Yep. So not a problem. Thank you. Everybody's running away next week. Some of you guys got to be here next week. Okay. <laughs> we need a bell ringer. You gonna be here next week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. All right. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to go out into our mission field this week.